Hey guys, today, an hour ago, Jeremy, otherwise known as MTG Headquarters, on Sleeve Meteor, and decoding was banned for Magic for Life. That includes Magic Online, that includes his DCI membership, as well as any future DCI memberships and or accounts he creates with Wizards of the Coast, maybe not even Magic. It could be Dungeons and Dragons, it could be uh, any of their products, Kaijudo, he will be immediately su suspended and terminated as soon as he creates an account, like something like Magic Arena, for instance, he cannot create anymore. So they took away his Magic Online account, which he sent, spent thousands of dollars on, tens of thousands of dollars, which is pretty obvious from watching his videos. I like how they sign it off sincerely. And the suspension and account termination is not appealable. I do hope, and we will later learn, if he will receive compensation for his Magic Online account. I'm assuming from this email that answer is no. Okay, so where do I stand on this? I do not agree with Jeremy, and I do not like what he did to Christine. And I don't like what he did to Tolarian. I felt like everyone could have resolved it in a orderly manner without involving so much drama. That being said, I will protect Jeremy's right to say what he needs to say. Jeremy is different. He has a different perspective. And that is good. We want diversity in magic, even if that diversity doesn't agree with what we believe in or what some of us believe in to silence that, and that's what they're doing. I did not expect them to do this. I expected them, given past behavior, just not to mention it and just say, okay, well, we made an announcement. So this is more strict than the counterfeit incident. This is more strict than the judge incident where the judges were suing Wizards of the Coast. This is the absolute final end, and that is quite sad. Uh, that is quite sad. Jeremy loves magic. He is a good guy. I don't know how his personality has changed, but I have met him in person. And I can tell you, the guy loves magic. He buys more magic product than most YouTubers. If not, I can probably think of two YouTubers on top of my head who buy more magic product than Jeremy does. The rest of them just receive free product. So I appreciate his honesty. I don't agree with him. And I disagree with him probably 90% of the time on his statements of Mero, Christine, Tolarian, Wedge. But I believe he has a right to say it without being banned for life. Because you're creating a, you're creating a very, very dangerous slope here. And who's going to be banned next? I mean, there's a list of us, right? And I'm on that list. And I'm okay with it because magic is magic. If I get banned, then I get banned. But this will this will irritate Jeremy. This will make him a martyr to the skeptic community, which is much, much larger than Magic the Gathering. And there will be this there will be backlash. Uh, I hope Wizards of the Coast is prepared for backlash. Because it won't be it will be like it's gonna be bad. And we will never have seen anything like this before. Uh, the amount of people, this is, was a poor financial decision. Maybe you say it's a moralistic victory. It's a ethical victory. They won on ethics. But at the core component, you have two philosophies in how to deal with people you disagree with. You have the philosophy, let's talk it and let's accept differences and let's except diversity, or you had the philosophy of let's just silence them and hope they go away. Well, if today's social media and given Jeremy's audience is now on the war path, they were already on a war path. I expect them to get much stronger. It's going to be very ugly. It's already extremely ugly. I mean, you look at the card quality, you look at the sales going on. I mean, if you want to know the health of magic, go to GameStop go to Target, go to Walmart, go to your local game store. 
see what they're selling this MSRP product for. It's not MSRP, I can tell you that much. I am a little confused and a little baffled. I didn't expect him to suspend Jeremy. I expected them to just, you know, talk to him in private, tell him, hey, you know, can you stop this? Let's have a talk. Jeremy is not an unreasonable human being. I have talked to him before. I've texted him before. I've met him in person. We had pancakes at IHOP. He loves magic. He truly loves magic. And from his perspective, I think he believes he's right. Now, I'm not going to judge his opinion because the whole point of this is opinions are your opinions and you're entitled to your opinion. So if Christine thinks that she was being harassed by Jeremy, that's her opinion and she can say it. If Jeremy feels like he's being slandered, he should be able to say it. This is a very, very poor look on Magic the Gathering. And I don't know why. So here's my experience with Magic the Gathering. And you have to go back to this archive because I think Jeremy, if he understands the story, there is something he can do to, quote, appeal it. So I'll tell him this story. I don't. He doesn't watch my videos anyway. When I was talking, when the, the Wizard of the Coast lawyer called, uh, it was a female lawyer, and she was pretty confused, didn't really understand magic. I, I just couldn't even like understand what she wanted from me. But she kept calling my war office place over and over again, and became a running joke. Then she called my cell phone, and we'd talk for hours and hours, and she would email my company email. and. It just was so unprofessional, so unwell. Like, I was like, wow, is this like their legal counsel? Like, really? Like, what? <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, I'm a lawyer too. So I can tell you it was one of the, it was the worst experience I've ever had with a legal counsel. It was that experience a few years ago with, on the counterfeit issue with the Wizard of the Coast legal counsel. Now, very quickly, or not very quickly, after a few phone calls and just her being very confused, this moved on to Hasbro. And Hasbro is a big, bad company. They're the company of My Little Pony and Transformer and Monopoly. So their lawyer was excellent. He understood every point I was trying to make, and then he countered, and then we got to an agreement, and I helped him, and he thanked me. He even invited me to... Uh, the best steakhouse in Houston, which I turned down because I had to go to an art gallery that night. But nonetheless, that was done correct. Hasbro knows what is up. I don't think Wizard of the Coast knows. I think they're run by people who are choosing things on emotion, while Hasbro is going to run stuff based on ec economy, numbers. Jeremy, this is going to be a very big blow to Magic the Gathering. No matter how much you hate him, how much you disagree with him, he has people who watch him who will quit over this. Magic is not in a good place right now. It's just not. Um, financially, you look at all the sales going on. I've never seen sales this low or prices this low ever. Ever. And even when Radio Shack went out of business, they didn't sell booster packs for a dollar. So... The storm is coming, and it's going to be really bad. And we can, I don't blame any of this on Christine. I do not blame any of this on Tolarian or Wedge or HQ or any, or Travis Wu apparently got suspended a year or two, which, you know, I can make a whole nother 50 minute video on how unfair that is. But let's just take that for another time. A storm is coming, and the storm was created via poor management on a product. The product is Magic the Gathering. The company is Wizards of the Coast. They have poorly managed the quality stock. When a counterfeiter makes better cars than you, you're in trouble. Yes, you are really in trouble because if you look at like Louis Vuitton and all the other things being counterfeited in China, the reason Louis Vuitton is Louis Vuitton is they make a better quality, right? Well, Magic the Gathering, it's the reverse. The car quality in stock is worse than if you had a random Chinese dude who was 17 living in his parents' basement printing off like a $400 printer because that's how they got started. So the story I wanted to share to Jeremy, if he is watching this video, talk to Hasbro. 
talk to them. My experience with Wizards of Coast, their attorneys, their team was horrific. It was just so unprofessional, so unrealistic, and just utter, utter garbage. But once, as soon as I talked to Hasbro, my gosh, they knew. They, it was like a real company. So in my opinion, Wizards of the Coast is run by people charged by emotions and not necessarily based on financial decisions or logical conclusions. Hasbro is the exact opposite. They are very high. So obviously I know the lawyers because I could go on LinkedIn and see them. So the Hasbro lawyer or the Wizards of the Coast lawyer had like two years, four years experience and she was like a junior lawyer. And suddenly, like, how did she become legal counsel of this huge company? I'm not sure because normally you have to work at a law firm a few years, maybe like seven years, and then you go in house or you become a partner at a law firm like seven, 10 years, and then you go in house. Very similar to many of my friends, but she came, I don't exactly remember, but I believe she came straight out of, straight to becoming a legal counsel. Now the Hasbro attorney, he's legit. He's from Houston. He's legit. He has the references. He has the history. He's not a shark you want to mess with. And he, but at the same time, he was super nice. He talked about Star Wars. He didn't understand magic, but we made the Star Wars analogy. He very quickly picked it up and everything was professionally handled. You got to get to Hasbro, dude. Anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.